Hey, I'm excited to have Chris Hunter on the Greg McAfee Show. Chris is an accomplished author, business coach, founder of Hunter Super Techs, and the Go Time Success Group. His business philosophy is rooted in the Bible, particularly Colossians 3.23. Chris has earned several accolades, uh, including the Tom McCart Consultant of the Year and National Recognized Contractor of the Year Awards and Inc. 5000's Fastest Growing Private Company. He's the Principal Industry Advisor for Service Titan, and we'll be diving into his insights on business by his design. Hit that like button and please hit that subscribe button for me. Now let's go. Hey, this is Greg McAfee and welcome to the Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. I am privileged to have Chris Hunter with us, um, and we're going to talk about a, a different kind of topic today uh, that we have uh, talked about in the past. Although I mention a lot of this in my show, uh, whatever whatever comes up, you know, we talk about it when it comes to Jesus, God, the Bible, those types of things that a lot of shows don't talk about. And uh, I've always said this is the clean version of uh, small business podcasts. Uh, so we try to keep it as professional. And I know a lot of you viewers appreciate that because you've let me know that. Um, there's nothing worse than to get into a podcast and have F-bombs dropped and GD dropped and all that stuff. Just so unprofessional. So we'll get right, we'll get started here. And uh, we're titling this uh, Business by His Design on Purpose, uh, Chris. And uh so I've got Chris Hunter. Chris, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about um, our relationship with Jesus and running a Christian business, which we both take serious. And uh, so I want to start off with uh, a couple questions um, as far as when we talk about our Christian walk and we refer to Jesus and Bible scriptures, um, could you share a little bit about your walk? Um, you know, when did you become a Christian and why? Please. Yeah. Well, first, let me let me just say thank you so much for inviting me on, man. I'm a huge fan. Uh, followed you for a long time. And a lot of uh, what even led me originally to you was uh, your your strong faith and you wasn't ashamed of it. And I respected that. And I, I've always tried to to find other leaders and mentors that that uh, I knew were were following that same path and that I could learn from, right? So I, I don't know. I can't remember how exactly I first heard about you, but a long time fan and uh, glad to glad to finally connect like this. And you sent me a book. I really appreciated that. That was a, it's a great book that you have as well. So oh, and I remember. Let me let me think back way back when you had a game uh, that I bought and then we played at our shop and it was uh, basically teaching the technicians and everybody how to all about business, but it was in a game format. And I, I love that. So I, yeah, flashback there. I just remembered that. Yeah. That was called uh top gob. And yep. it was uh, stood for the open book game of business. And uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to let technicians and installers and everybody else know just a little bit about making decisions in a business. So that's a pretty cool game. Yeah, it was excellent. But <laughs> yeah, you. so so back to uh, some, some my walk. So let me give you the short version. So I was really blessed, man. I grew up with uh, uh, in the in the church, grew up. My mom was a strong believer, always uh, taught me the right things and and uh, all that stuff. My dad as well. But um, I remember at, at 11 years old, um, I kind of had my first taste of, of, of mortality, like what in the world? So I had my, my stepdad at the time was killed in a car accident mm. and it just opened up a whole lot of questions for me, you know, like, oh my, what does that mean? Where do they go? What happens? You know, and all of that since happened. And, and, uh, and at that point in time is when I kind of hit that, oh my goodness, I need a savior, you know? And, and I remember 
my mom to tell me all about it as well. And, and I even had grandparents that always, you know, modeled it as well. So at that point in time, I become a believer. Uh, but now fast forward, I was a typical teenager, man. I'm telling you, Greg, I, I, I ran hard, had a lot of fun, did a lot of things and, 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 Lo and behold, kind of fell, fell into the trap of just living my life my own way for for a while and even in business. But then in at some point, I want to say it was probably around 2010, 2011, uh, it, I really had a, a an awakening, you know, like, oh, my goodness, uh, this is my my chance to, to live a godly life, pass on a legacy and really make a difference. So at that point in time is really when it, it turn for me and, and it, I went all in as, as you could say. Yeah. That, that's, that's a great story. And, yeah. you know, I think we all need to, uh, there's going to be a time in everyone's life where they realize they need something more. There's something yeah. else out there there. You, we can't do it on our own. Every time we try, it fails. And, and we can only create temporary happiness so long. Yeah. And, and- and when I say, you know, uh, a lot of people have the have the conversion story of, oh, they were doing drugs and drinking and all this stuff. So I, I necessarily I wasn't necessarily that I, I was in all if, to the outside looking in. Oh, wow. A great guy. You know, look at him. But you know what? I, I just was very apathetic. I wasn't a, I wasn't being intentional. I wasn't trying to to use my influence. I wasn't trying to uh, do anything that God blessed me with these gifts for. So. So it was. I was living Chris's way, but it was very apathetic. And so the conversion to uh, going all in wasn't necessarily like, "Oh my goodness, you were terrible, and now you have you've completely turned around." But in all sense of the world, I, I was being very, very complacent and apathetic with the responsibility uh, God had given me. Yeah, I had someone ask me one time, a uh, HVAC sales rep. Um, well aren't you good enough? And I said, no, I'm not me. I'm not good enough. I need Jesus. Uh, But when you don't understand that and you're on the outside a little bit, which I've been there, you don't understand things like that. It really takes uh, a spiritual relationship and a connection before you truly understand that. Um, That's true. How does your Christian faith influence your approach to business today? Yeah. So to me, um, really and truly, I mean, if you think about what what it even means to to be a Christian in business, I mean, in, in fact, everybody uh, should whether whether you're a believer or not, they should maybe want to do business with a, a Christian based business. Just on you know, if you think about the principles they operate by, it just makes sense. It's servant leadership. It's uh, doing the right thing. It's you know, I mean, it, why wouldn't somebody want to do that? But for me. It, I realized, you know, that, hey, this isn't none of this is mine. You know, it's all been given to me by God. I'm I'm essentially the manager of the resources he's given me. And if he's blessed me to operate this business, uh, what am I doing with it? And in fact, one time uh, in church, I was I was, you know, how certain things can inspire you. But basically, our preacher gave that same thing. He's like, you've all been given influence. He said, but what do you what are you doing with it? And he said, if, if you're not doing something start now, just do something, you know? And, and I was thinking, wow, you know, I've got a pretty, pretty large team at the time, you know, I mean, to me, it was large, but I uh, had several people and I was like, what am I really doing to to influence this whole thing? Uh, and, and I wasn't doing much. So it kind of set up on a fire of me, of me to, all right, let's be very intentional about uh, intertwining my faith with the business, which is a conflicting uh, subject a lot of times, right? but man, it, it took fire. And for example, I decided, okay, first I'm just going to pour into the people, you know, man, they, we've got divorces, we've got issues, money problems. So how can I build them up and, and, and use biblical uh, principles to try to help them grow? So I started this, uh, I, I had a weekly Bible study, but it was based, it was basically life skills, but it was biblically based and I would invite my team and I'm like, hey, this is optional. You can come if you want. And lo and behold, uh, almost everybody came. And then everybody did come. And then a few weeks went on. And then some electricians stopped me. And they're like, hey, we heard you're, you know, building your your team over there. Can can we join? I'm like, yeah, 
come on and join. Well, a few more weeks passed and, and more and more people from the community wanted to do it. Before you know it, we had 100 men from the community that were coming to our weekly uh, Bible study uh, on life skills and just how to win, you know, in life based on what the Bible has to say. So I, every time I think about that, I mean, I, I myself uh, would have been scared to death to do that. But uh, the challenge that I heard, the calling from the Holy Spirit to say, hey, Chris, I got it. If you act on it and I'll, I'll bless it. Uh, that, that's why what, what I did. And I, I truly believe it was a, a blessing for many. Yeah. I, I, again, that's a, that's a neat story. And when you're, um, when you step out and do what God wants you to do, um, uh, you know, it's amazing what will happen. I mean, you had no idea you'd go from a few people to a hundred Yeah, uh, and people are hungry. They're hungry for life lessons they're hungry to know how to live a better life they really are that that was that was what i saw i mean it was just a matter of man people are they're desperate they're they're all searching for something right and and uh, if if we can use our influence uh to to point them in the right direction that that was the the goal that i wanted to do uh how about uh can you share a specific challenge or a difficult moment in your business journey and how your faith played a role in overcoming it? That's a great question. I mean, so for me, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, even the smallest challenge, Greg, I, I, I would, I would pray daily, you know, uh, it, forever little things. So, I mean, it wasn't just a matter of the the big ones for me. It was a matter of just leaning on, on uh, God's wisdom all the time. But, but I tell you what, one, one significant one for me, and this was, wasn't necessarily a challenge, but it was a, an opportunity. And um, so at one point in time, I was approached by a, a franchise group, right? This was early in my business and they were, they had this model where they wanted to give you a bunch of money. They wanted to write you a big check. And then essentially you convert over to the franchise uh, and then, you know, operate that way. Well, they flew us down and wined and dined us, you know, and all the stuff. They're really, oh, it just looks like an awesome thing. And they were prepared to write us a million dollar check. Uh, hey, just cash this check. It's yours. And to me, you know, I'm from a small town in Oklahoma and I don't care what you say, a million dollars. Uh, my eyes just got huge. You know, it, it was a lot of money. I couldn't even imagine at the time having a million dollars, you know, like that. And, and I was going to take it, you know, I'm like, me and my wife both were like, yeah, hey, a million dollars would be a fool not to do this deal. And then I remember praying about it and I'm like, God, just don't let me mess this up, please. You know, I mean, make it either a uh, yes or no, just help me. Don't let me get in the way of this thing. And uh, sure enough, man, my gut hit and it twisted and I could just feel it. And it said, no, you know, don't. And I was and so I'm thinking, OK, we're really going to turn down a million dollars because uh, you're prompting me to say no. Uh, so for me, that was like a huge like line in the sand. Are we going to take the money, the million or say no because of a prompting by, by God to tell me, hey, this ain't the right time. And uh, so me and my wife both decided, you know what, let's 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 roll with it. Let's trust trust what's in store for us. And we said no. Um, and turn that deal down. Now, fast forward a few years later, several years later, our business took off. The private equity boom came in and we were able to sell the business uh, later on for, for much, much more than that. But uh, it, it was, it was, but that was a pretty key time for me just to say, would you turn down a million dollar check if God told you to say no? And I don't know how many people could say that, but uh, it, it made for a, a very real decision to make you know? Yeah. And if you were out there on your own and you didn't have the relationship, um, with God, with Christ, as you do, um, you, you would have said yes. And then who knows, who knows where you'd be a million, a million is still a lot of money, but boy, it, yeah. it gets spent pretty fast. Well, and that, that's exactly right. And the, the things that I learned would, would entail after that, you know, as far as what that meant to, to join that particular one. And, and it's, I'm not knocking the the group at all. They're, they're phenomenal models. They do a great job with a lot of people, but just uh, it would have, would have had a totally different outcome uh, many years into the future uh, and not the same as where, where we landed today. 
What what would you say to uh, another Christian who runs a business and they say uh, they just don't believe that they should mix religion with business? I, what do you say to that? Yeah, so we we just had an annual planning event. We had a bunch of contractors in, and one contractor he mentioned that to me. He's like, "Man, you know, I'm a I'm a Christian. I really respect, you know, how how bold you are." He said, "But you know, with all these lawsuits and all the stuff that's coming up, how how do you mix that in? You know, I mean, and and he's like." What? what did you think or how did you go about it? And I'm like, well, honestly, so first of all, I, I wasn't ashamed of it. So anyone that ever came to work, uh, I made it right up front, you know, Hey, here's our values. Here's our, our mission statement. Uh, here's what we're based on. Uh, so there was no hiding it coming in the front door. Uh, I didn't push anything on anybody, you know, um, uh, as far as anything like that. And then, uh, I, then I told him, I'm like, well, look, I'm, I'm just going to do what God tells me to do. And I'm going to trust if something happens or whatever, he's going to handle the outcome for me. Uh, you know, so I, I'm not going to be scared of it. I'm not going to go, um, you know, pushing it down people's throat per se, but I'm, I'm going to trust God that, uh, if I'm faithful to what he's asking me to do, he will handle anything that I come through good or bad. So that was really how I looked at it. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, we might, we might have something who knows. I mean, you, you know, you've had struggles as well. I mean, they're, they're always there, but I, I truly believe if, if you, if you know why you're doing something, you know, with your whole why of what you're doing and your mission's clear, um, you know, I, I wouldn't sweat it. That, that was my, my advice to him. Yeah, I feel I feel the same way. And uh, early in my career, God's really uh, not in an audible voice or anything, but he spoke to me while I was getting ready for work. And he said, I want you to pray uh, during this company meeting today. And I said, and I got teary eyed um, and I said, OK, I just hadn't done that before. We only had a, maybe eight people. And yeah. so in the company meeting, I pray, I said, guys, we're, we're going to, um, you, everybody here knows I'm a Christian, but I want to pray for all of you. Any prayer requests, a few hands went up. So I prayed and I, God spoke through me. And, uh, at the end of the meeting, I was walking into my office and I felt someone behind me and I turned around and it was, uh, his name's Scott. He'd been with me from day one and he said, he was crying and he said, uh, I want what you got. And, yeah. Uh, we we prayed through, and uh, he accepted Christ. Started going to church, and uh, you just never know. If I wouldn't have listened, and I would have said, "I'm not praying," I'm not praying in a company meeting, um, but God wanted me to for a reason. Yeah, and, uh, that's powerful. I mean, when you just when you're obedient and you listen, and uh, you drop your pride, it's not about you. Yeah, it's about Him. And yeah. uh, it's amazing what he can accomplish in a life when you allow him to. Man, that is that is awesome. I, I love that because, I mean, think about the even the, the legacy, not just the one guy there, but I mean, change his life for eternity. Uh, but think about his family, you know, what what's going to come out of all that. I mean, you just never know. It's like that, that that avalanche, you know, you kick that one rock at the top and, you know, see what happens as it, as it keeps flowing down. So that's that's awesome. It is. It's powerful. Still is today. I get I get emotional pretty easy when stuff like that because it's just powerful. Yeah. Uh, well, because you know it matters. You know, I mean, all this other stuff. I mean, th that we do. Uh, you and I both have had a uh, uh, a near death experience or or a health challenge that's kind of brought us to. Uh oh. You know. Uh, wow. This is real, and this could all all go away in a hurry. Um, I know with your your heart thing that you went through. I. In 2019, I had a uh, a real serious illness as well, and and I didn't think I was going to make it, you know. And 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 I remember thinking uh, and praying, and I had this weird, weird peace about me because I knew that okay, if 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 God heals me, I'm going to have a powerful testimony. But if he's if he's not, if it's not, I know where I'm going, you know. So there was a great peace about all of that, but but it brought about a. a a further, deeper, clearer understanding of, of wow, 
do things that matter because this thing is very temporary that we're, we're doing here on earth. You know what I mean? So it was, uh, until someone kind of has that experience, I think sometimes we can, we can just get really busy, you know, and just do life and kind of like I was early in my, in my business and life where you're just, you're either just apathetic or you're busy or, or, uh, you're just kind of coasting, uh, but I've tried to really shift to being very intentional about everything that I, I do now. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're the same way after after going through that. Yeah, two years ago today, I drove myself what? to the hospital uh, because I was having I've been ha I had been having upper chest pains, real cold pain, really different than anything you read. There was no there was no nothing in a book that said if you have these pains, this it's your heart. And I just thought everything I read was stress. I was taking care of two elderly sick parents and one of them was calling me a hundred times a day and I was just stressed. And when, when that would happen, my, my chest would flare up and then it dissipate. So it had to be stress, it had to be stressed. But one day when I sat at my desk, it was a Saturday morning. I sat at my desk and I couldn't lift my hands to type. Um, I called my wife and I said, I'm, I'm we have a hospital five minutes away. I said, I'm going to drive myself to Miami Valley South just to they can do a test, see what it is. And, uh, well, they kept me. <laughs> so, um, and they gave, just so you know, they gave me three tests that were negative. If I would have went home after those three tests, I'd be dead. Wow. Uh, the fourth test was a blood enzyme test of my heart and it showed it elevated. elevated. And then they did a, uh, heart, uh, cath up through my arm into my heart. And uh, they found five major blockages. My widow maker was 99% blocked. And uh, I went into the surgery that next morning at 5 a.m. and had a quintuple bypass. Oh, man. That's a life changer. Um, I had just done 30 minutes on the elliptical two days before, no problems. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, you think you're okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then I got out of the hospital and my wife got COVID pneumonia and she was in the hospital 19 days and she almost died. So yes, our kids that. almost lost both parents, you know, same year. So life is short and you never know what's around the corner for any of us at any time. And yeah. like you said, um, you know, nobody wants nobody wants to go. Nobody's ready to leave their family. Nobody's ready to go. I. A good friend of mine just passed away. He was on his deathbed. He he um, owned a very large corporation and sold it about 15 years ago. But he was on his deathbed, still mentally sharp. And he said, um, I don't like this. I don't like this. He knew where he was going, but he yeah. still didn't want to leave. Nobody wants to leave. Yeah. Um, even if you know where you're going and you know heaven's going to be a, you know, None of us really know what heaven's like, but we know it's better than this. Uh, but we still don't want to leave. We don't want to leave our family. We don't want to, you know, it's a, and I say all that, I guess, to say we, we all need to be ready. Well, it, it it's the matter of being ready. And it's also, uh, hopefully, if someone can listen to someone like you and me that's that's uh, had that aha moment. And, and I've studied, you know, lots of leaders and a lot of them have had this type of moment. Like John Maxwell had a very similar uh, thing, just like you did uh, with his. And after that, he admits, you know, that he he wanted to be more intentional and help more people and do things that matter. But but when you think about, um, you know, I, I heard the this this story one time it talked about you know if you can imagine a a rope you know and you're holding on to the rope and it takes off and it goes out and it wraps around the earth you know it's just that long of a rope and it just keeps going forever and ever and ever and yet we're only holding on to just a little bitty piece of the rope here and we got all this eternity in front of us it was it's like oh my my goodness this this is just a little bitty blip in the radar and uh, and you only got so many days here, so might as well do things that matter that are going to even produce results into that eternity, right? I mean, I there's nothing I, I desire more than to have all my friends, family, and everybody uh, spend an eternity with me. I, I I don't want anybody to be left behind. Exactly. Thanks for joining us on this part one of this incredible interview with Chris Hunter on the Greg McAfee Show. A big thanks to Chris for being part of the show. 
And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and please subscribe below. You can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your preferred listening platform. Keep listening. I'll keep challenging you. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Be sure to tune in next week for part two with Chris Hunter. As always, thanks for listening. Carry on. God bless. And none of us are guaranteed another day. So enjoy your day. Make it a good one.